From Esther Baptist Church on Witcher Creek, it's preaching time with Pastor Randy Wilson. I wrote these <laughs> and can't read them. <laughs> All right, it's preaching time. Amen. In the book of Genesis, chapter number four, Genesis, chapter number four. As seen on TV. Have you ever fell for that? (laughs) We've got this super duper thing for 1995, and it'll not only wax your car, but your wife can use it for perfume. It's just the greatest product you ever saw. And if you're older today, we'll send you two of them. All you have to do is pay shipping and handle. And then when you get it, I mean, it wasn't what you bargained for. Look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 1. And I want to preach today on Eve's acquirement, what she acquired. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, Adam knew his wife. She conceived and bare Cain. And here's what she said. I've got me a man from the Lord. (laughs) Amen. I've got a man from the Lord. I want to preach on that thought. What she acquired when she thought she'd got a man from the Lord. Heavenly Father, thank you today. Lord, thank you that uh, Logan got to come home and and the Rogers family that's here. Thank you for all of it. Lord, thank you for the church and and for those that are here this morning. I pray, Lord, for them. I pray for our folks that are not able to be here. Lord, I pray some of them in the hospital, some of them sick at home. Father, I pray that you'd bless them today. You'd help me to preach in a way that would encourage people to live for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Eve was actually named by her husband, not God. Adam named her twice. The first time he named her, he called her woman because she was taken out of man. Genesis chapter 2, verse 23. The second time he named her, he called her Eve because she was the mother of all living. Genesis chapter 3, verse 20. Eve's named four times in the Bible. And uh, I'll I'll just give you what what they are. First time she's named as Adam's pronunciation. Second time she's named as the conception of their children. The third time she's named as she's indicated in that she's susceptible to deception. Maybe that's what happened here. And in the fourth time, she's named her nomenclature in creation, that she was created second, not first. Amen. Amen. Well, I could preach there, but I won't. Eve was deceived. That's what the Bible says. She was deceived, and is that... Deception, she actually named her children because of that deception. She was under deception when she thought, I got a man from the Lord. She called his name Cain, which means I've acquired. I've acquired, I've got a man from the Lord. She called her second son Abel, which means vanity. She missed it, didn't she? She called her third son Seth, 
uh, which means a substitute. But I want us to look here in verse number 1, the only verse that we have actually uh, read today. She says she has gotten a man. I have acquired a man from the Lord, L-O-R-D, all capitals. What she acquired was not a man from the Lord at all. But what she acquired was a first-class sinner. Mom, can I tell you that's what you acquire too. Uh, You think that that little child of yours is the greatest, but no, you're wrong. Eve was wrong. Uh, Adam was his father physically. Make no mistake about that. Adam was his father physically. But if you'll read 1 John chapter 3 and verse 12, Satan was his father spiritually. This man that she got from the Lord was not from the Lord at all, but was from Satan. And uh, why this happened is illustrated back in uh, uh, the Garden of Eden when Eve trusted Satan to tell her uh, the knowledge of good and evil instead of trusting God. Amen. She fell for his lie instead of trusting God. She, She thought, well, now I know the difference. And she acquired a young man who was totally uninterested in God. Sacrifice is mentioned, and and when sacrifice is mentioned, they come up with two different sacrifices. One son brings the fruit of the ground. The other son brings a lamb from the flock. Now in verse number 7, if you want to come this way, God says that there's a requirement. If you're going to come some way besides the blood, there's a requirement. People say, well, the only way you can get to heaven is through the blood. Well, you can try another way, but I've already failed before I got started. The requirement was that you do good, not bad. For you to get to heaven by uh, paying your own way requires... Not just do good, but do perfect good. Complete, perfect obedience. From the time you're born to the time you die, never one time do you ever do anything that's bad. I done failed, have you? Matthew chapter 19, we have another young man that wanted to uh, do that same deal. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 19, if you'll turn over there, I'll start reading at verse 16. Here's another fellow that had Cain's attitude about uh, if I'll do good. 19.16, Matthew 19.16 says, And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do? If you do good, you'll be accepted. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, he didn't say believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He didn't say if thou wilt enter into life, uh, receive the blood. He said if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Is that what he said? Same thing he told Cain. If you want to come in this way, if you want to come in some other way, then then by the blood of the Lamb, you're going to have to do good. You're going to have to keep the commandments. Well, this little self-righteous young man said unto him, Which? And Jesus said, Give him the list there. Murder and adultery and stealing and false witness and honoring your parents and loving your neighbor. Now look down at verse number 20. The young man saith unto thee, All these have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? Well, I think I need to test you on one more point, young man. I think I'll test you on the same point that I tested the Apostle Paul on. What point is that? What, What am I missing? I think that says that somewhere in one of the other scriptures. 
one thing thou lackest. That's probably in the book of Mark. I'd have to look it up. But, but he said, uh, all these have I kept. What do I lack? Well, he said, I want to test you on something else. I need to test you on covetousness. Yeah, amen. That's what I need to test you on. Yeah, amen. amen. How would you do? You know, if you wasn't covetous, it wouldn't matter that you sold everything you had and yeah, give right. to the poor. Amen. But because you want to grab it for yourself, because you want to hang on to it. And amen, amen. You see, covetousness will get you when the rest of them will let you slide. Eve has acquired a man who is covetous. He's covetous enough that, that whenever he thinks that his brother can make it without doing what he does, he's covetous enough to kill his brother. How did he get that way? John chapter 3, verse 19 and 20. The Bible said that they don't like light. Neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. They can't stand to have the light of God's Word shine on them. Sin doesn't make us want to run to God. It makes us want to run away from God. You remember when Adam sinned in the garden? Uh, he hid. Yeah, amen. And just about everybody, whenever they're caught up in some sin, they want to hide. They don't want to face the reality. When Adam hid from God, it was because he didn't want to be exposed for what he was. Yeah, amen. Isn't that what Ronnie just got through teaching you? If you want saved, you need to admit what you are. Yeah, amen. You need to be exposed. Cain did not want to be exposed. I don't want to be exposed. Yeah, amen. And you don't want to be exposed. Yeah, amen. Whenever we get plowing real close to you taters, you get a little red in the face and upset and want to hide and try to go some other. Amen. Yeah, because, amen. because you see, sin doesn't, if we're sinners, we don't want to be in yeah. church. Amen. Church skippers are in real good company. Yeah. <laughs> the devil doesn't want to be here either. Yeah, amen. Amen. John, uh, Job chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible said Satan was glad uh, to get away from the presence of the Lord. I mean, he'd been called in there. He had to come. Yeah. But after the interview was over, he got out there just as quick as he could get out of there. And I think that's the way a lot of, <laughs> all you folks that wants to run out the door just as quick as church is over. I think the reason is because the preaching of God's Word will expose you for what you are and our whole natural being is like Adam and like Cain. We just want to get away from That's what Eve acquired. Amen. You know, they, there's a reason why America doesn't want to tolerate Jesus. There's a reason why we want Him out. We want Him out of the White House, we want him out of the state house, we want him out of our house, we want him out of the church house. The reason is be simply this, he makes them uncomfortable. I can think that Cain was squirming when God said, hey, if you'll do good, you'll be accepted. Let me ask you this, does preaching make you uncomfortable? Amen. Uh, sometimes it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Especially if they happen to nail something I'm into. Yeah, amen. Amen. The, the, reason, the reason that 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 we are in the problem we have today is because we're under the judgment of God. And that makes us uncomfortable. We don't want to admit we're under the judgment of God. But I'm telling you, God's no respecter of persons in judgment. When he judges a nation, he's liable to wipe out Elk River uh, because of the nation. Amen. You think Katrina is a judgment from God? Amen. San Diego County, California is on fire. Ventura County, California is on fire. Monterey, California is on fire. Uh, the, the, the worst drought in history is hitting Texas. Yeah. 
What's going on here? Do we realize that, hey, it's time we stopped and as a nation look up and say, God, I am sorry that I offended you. But it makes people uncomfortable when you talk like that. They don't want that even uh, mentioned. Uh, they would never have any, anything like that. Uh, both Georgia and Alabama, no rain. The supply of water in Atlanta, Lake Lanier, uh, uh, is just about a, a reproof. The weather's gone crazy. Now, I'm not going to preach this, but has anybody ever heard of high-frequency active auroral research program? Heart. <laughs> Men think they're smart. They think they can bombard the atmosphere and control the weather. Uh, I'm going to tell you the Lord, whenever the Lord steps in, He's allowing man enough rope. And I've always noticed that. You allow them enough rope, they'll hang themselves. Yeah. It'll show up who they are. You just, you, just let, you just let them go. You don't, have, you don't have to beat on them. You just let them go. They'll hang themselves. In Jeremiah chapter 25 and verse 33, the Bible said the, the slain of the Lord at Armageddon, the slain of the Lord will be from one end of the earth to the other. I mean, when he steps in to judgment, he'll, he's going to kill them for just miles and miles and miles laying in heaps. Those who endure to the end of the tribulation period there, Matthew 24, 13, they will enter the kingdom in natural bodies. Yeah. Well, now this be some hard preaching. Let me preach to myself, and, and you don't have to believe it. I mean, you know, but I, I'm going to preach it anywhere. But whenever the kingdom gets here, do you realize sinners will go into the kingdom? Yeah. Sinners won't go into the kingdom, but those born there will will still have that nature of Cain. But they'll live in a land where there is no sickness. They'll live in a land where there's no disease. Uh, they'll multiply as the sand by the seashore. Uh, there is uh, evidence uh, uh, that they need a rod of iron, even in the millennial. There is evidence, uh, Isaiah and Micah both teach, that Christ will judge at the coming of the nations. And he will judge the nations during the millennial. And some are to be rebuked. And whenever you rebuke somebody, even in the millennial, they don't like it. Yeah. It appears from Micah chapter 4 and verse 3 that some nations will kind of remove far off. Just get, if I can get away from Jerusalem. They want me to come up there every year and worship and I want to just get away from Jerusalem. The problem is when we don't come up there, there isn't any rain gets on us and directly we in the millennial kingdom. That's why sinners can't go to heaven. Even in the millennial kingdom, they will come up with some idea that, hey, God's been unfair to me. They do not want to come into the presence of God. Like Cain and like Satan and like a sinner, they're uncomfortable. At the end of the thousand year reign, Satan loosed out of his prison. He goes out and finds them just like the uh, one end of the earth to the other, four quarters of the earth, all over the place. They're, they're just everywhere, sent back bonds. Where did Cain go? Cain went into the land of Nod. And what that means, Nod is a wanderer. And so Eve acquired a wanderer. When you leave the presence of God, yeah. amen, you will never be satisfied anywhere. Amen. When you know God and you get away from God, you'll never be satisfied anywhere. Amen. You may build some fine home, you may be a wealthy person, Amen. Worldly wise, you may success, be successful. You may be a movie star like Elvis Presley, or you may be a down and out or sleeping under a bridge. You may ride a Rolls Royce or a freight train, but you'll never be satisfied. All you'll do is wander around looking for something that you can't find. Because you see, there's a God-shaped vacuum in man's heart, and he can't fill it with anything but God. 
No satisfaction out of the presence of God. Eve acquired a, a man that was ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Solomon was a rich man. I hope you appreciate how Solomon was rich enough to use John Rockefeller as a butler. Solomon was the richest man that ever lived. The wisest man outside of Jesus that ever lived. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, he said the whole deal is vanity. It's just useless. It's vexation of the Spirit. There's no profit under the sun. In 5.16 he said, just like you're laboring after the wind. You're going to catch the wind, and when you catch it, what have you got? Yeah. Nothing. Cain's wandering was east of Eden. Eden's the place where God set his people and where he wanted them to be. But whenever he drove uh, Adam and Eve out of the garden, he put a gate there with a cherubim, a flaming sword, and that flaming sword uh, uh, kept the way to the Garden of Eden so that nobody could get in there. And I think as Cain went out there and he built him a city, he went out there and he got all of these things. I wonder if he ever thought about Mom. I wonder if he ever thought how Mom thought he was the greatest thing since the tree of good and evil. I start to say sliced bread, but I, I wonder what he thought. I wonder what she thought. Can you think about that day? And I just want to want to just, if I can for just a minute, settle in on that day. Can you think about that day? They didn't have any guns. So Congress couldn't ban the guns. But they can't ban murder. Amen. I can see him as he went there and his brother in the field. And his brother telling him, hey, boy, I sure had some fellowship with God. How'd you do that? Oh, all I had to do was bring the lamb and the, the fat there. I offered it on the altar there and God was well pleased with yeah. me. Yeah. And I can see what Eve acquired was a murderer. Yeah. It wasn't a man from the Lord at all. And I can see him as they're maybe walking down, I don't know, about twilight of that day. Maybe they're both of the boys out in the field somewhere, and they're walking back towards their home, and, and Eve looks at her, uh, Cain looks around, and he sees this stick. And he picks this stick up from behind his brother, slips up behind his brother, <laughs> hits him in the head, and, and Abel falls to the ground, and Cain lights into beating him and beat him and beat him and beat him until he, he thought, I've got rid of him. I'll never hear from Abel again. Yeah. But don't you know amen. that his blood can talk? Yeah, amen. amen. God came and said, Cain, uh, where's your brother? What, you think I'm a Democrat or something? <laughs> hey, my brother's keeper. Yeah. Amen. What makes you think I know where he is? God said, I know where he is, and Amen. you do too. Yeah. Amen. You hid it. You hid it from everybody, but I know where he is. Yeah. Your brother's blood cries to me from the ground. Yeah. Like, like all prisoners, when God sentenced him to go away, he said, my punishment's greater than I can bear. Yeah. Here it comes. Thirty Nine years now I've been saying this. Sin, it'll cost you more Amen. than you wanted to pay. Yeah. Keep you longer than you wanted to stay. Yeah. Take you further than you wanted to go. Yeah. We'd be better off, am I telling it right? Amen. We'd be better off if we would come Abel's way. Yeah. If we would say, Lord, Lord in heaven, I know I'm a sinner. But I'm bringing you the offering of the lamb. I want you to receive this lamb in my place. And if I, I'm not trying to say, not even trying to say that I can be good enough to go to heaven. Right. I'm trying to say that I'm a sinner and I need the grace of Almighty God. Yeah. And when the grace of God comes by, amen. Some people might think it's vanity. Even, even Eve. 
thought Abel was vain. But hey, I'd rather acquire foolishness of God as I would the wisdom of men. What did she acquire? She acquired a murderer, a liar, a self-righteous hypocrite, thought he could make it without the blood of the lamb. She acquired a first-class sinner. And since that day, friend, every one of us are born in sin, shaping in iniquity, first-class sinners, unless the grace of God intervenes in our life. Amen. We'll just kill each other. You think that's wrong, but I'm telling you, if you let them get in power, they'll kill each other. They'll kill me. They'll kill you. They'll kill everybody that wants to live for God. I would rather live for Jesus than I would acquire the wealth of this whole world. Let's bow for prayer.